Hi friends, welcome back to my kitchen. Today we are going to do a freezer meal prep. I do this about once a month, hence a monthly freezer meal prep. And today we are going to be prepping a lot of things that can be used in a variety of ways. So we're gonna start out with prepping some homemade frozen meatballs. You all know in the freezer section at the grocery store, you can get bags of frozen meatballs, but they don't always have the ingredients that you want in them. And let's be honest, we can probably make a tastier meatball by doing this homemade. And in our household, we do have some gluten sensitivities and that's something that sometimes is in those store-bought frozen meatballs. So to start out, we've got three pounds of local beef here that I'm going to be mixing up. And then I have some almond flour. Now, if you have no problem with using breadcrumbs or crackers, you can totally do that. I'm just doing this in place of that. Plus it adds some extra protein. And I don't usually do measurements. I generally just kind of shake in the <laughs> um, almond flour until I am pretty happy with how it looks. So that was probably a fourth to a half cup that I just put in there. And then since I have three pounds in here, I'm going to go ahead and use three eggs to help bind together the almond flour and the beef. And then you could just add salt and pepper to this if you wanted to, but I do have a seasoning that we really like. Ooh, that egg. Oh, I got a shell. From Kinders, and we like their seasonings. You all know I use their buttery steakhouse an awful lot, but this one here is the prime steak one. It goes really well with beef. And again, I'm not doing crazy measurements. I'm just kind of seasoning the meat and I'm gonna mix this all together. To make this process a little bit easier, you could definitely use a ice cream scoop or something like that, but I'm just gonna go ahead and make them by hand. Now I did put some parchment paper down on the cookie sheet and that's just gonna help everything come up a bit easier. And just remember, you can make these whatever size you would like and they can be pretty close together. In fact, they probably could be touching because you could get them apart after they've been frozen. And I'm doing this first today because I know that these will be mostly frozen probably until I am done prepping the other things I'm going to make today. And these are the only thing I'm making that I want like pre-frozen. And the other thing that's so nice about making a versatile meatball like this is I can make this into an Alfredo sauce, I can make a red sauce, I can make these um, in like an Asian inspired dish as well. I can really use these any way I want to. That's why I didn't get very crazy with the spices and things. I just wanted to make sure that the meat was seasoned really well so that as I fry them up, they've got seasoning throughout the meatball. Alright, so before we run these down to the deep freezer in the cellar, I'm actually going to turn on my oven because we are going to be making a really good strawberry baked oatmeal here in a second. Also, need to remember to take my skillets out of my oven. I think I mentioned this in my last video, but I store our cast iron skillets in here, and so I have to remember to take those out every time I preheat the oven. 
All right, I'm just gonna set these in my deep freezer. This is an area I'm hoping to get some organization squeezed in before spring. But I'm just gonna set these in here because I know they'll freeze the fastest down here. Plus I really don't have the space upstairs to freeze these. This recipe is incredibly simple and with strawberry season upon us, y'all are gonna wanna be using some strawberries up, especially if you have your own strawberry patch. So this is a great way to use it. I am going to be making it in a large baking sheet like this so I can cut it in squares and freeze it so it's an easy heat up breakfast for us. So I'm doubling a nine by 13 recipe. This recipe is from my Texas kitchen. I'll leave the link below and it's very simple. I'm just gonna mix all of my wet ingredients in here first and then slowly add the dry ingredients. So we've got some egg, which is great. That's one of the things I love about doing baked oatmeal is that egg adds a little more protein in it for my kiddos when they're eating breakfast and just keeps them better sustained through the morning, especially when we're doing homeschool. Then we've got a little bit more protein in our tummies to think out our math problems and everything. <laughs> We're gonna use some vanilla extract, and in my kitchen, I measure vanilla with my heart. My mom does the same thing, and we end up with recipes that have a whole lot of extra vanilla in them, but personally, I think it just makes it taste really delicious. I'm using whole milk in this, not because I normally use whole milk, but because I'm using this in another recipe we're making today, and so I had extra here, and so I'm gonna go ahead and use it up in this, I often make things with almond milk um, or even doing a combination of almond milk and heavy cream. So we will see how this turns out. I think it's gonna be really good to be honest with you and a great way to use up that milk. Just pulling out my butter dish to add in butter. I love when I find recipes that have butter instead of vegetable oil because I just don't normally even have vegetable oil on hand. So I would prefer to use olive oil or butter or even lard in some cases um, over the vegetable oils. We're gonna go ahead and mix up all of these wet ingredients. So now I'm gonna add in the baking powder. Anytime I'm doing baking and I'm using baking powder or baking soda, I always like to mix that in with my wet ingredients so that I mix it in well and it gets blended throughout a little bit better before like adding it last because it's such an essential part of the batter or the baked good. Another thing I love about this recipe is that it uses old fashioned oats or rolled oats. And I definitely prefer using these over the quick oats. So I'm just adding these in. Now this does call for brown sugar. I don't have any made up right now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use my cane sugar and then I'm going to grab my molasses and just put a nice little squeeze or drop or two of molasses into the batter. Um, if you guys didn't know, you can easily make homemade brown sugar with adding molasses to white sugar or to cane sugar. This is where you could add in nutmeg and other spices if you wanted to. The recipe calls for some cinnamon, but you could go crazy and add in anything that you enjoy. Now I'm just gonna get my salt out of this little salt container that I get comments about all the time and also including the mixer. I get a lot of comments about this as well because it's not a kitchen aid. And this mixer I've actually had for a couple of years now and it is a very affordable option when it comes to 
a sand mixer. So if you're interested in that or this little container, the questions, I've recently updated my Amazon shop. After probably about two years of needing to do that, I finally did that. So a lot of the things you might be looking for, you may be able to find there and that is linked in the description box. Okay, so everything is in here. We're gonna go ahead and give this a stir. I'm gonna grab my molasses because I didn't forget about that and drop some of that in as well. This recipe does call for frozen strawberries, but I'm gonna go ahead and use fresh. I might use a few extra just because there would be a little extra liquid if you were using frozen strawberries. I'm just gonna slice these guys up because that's what her recipe calls for. So basically we're going to take the strawberry slices and we're going to line them on the bottom of this pan. I did already oil this with some avocado oil so I'm just going to place a layer, kind of not too close together, but just kind of across the board. This is supposed to have, I believe, four cups of sliced strawberries in the entire recipe with doubling it. So if I can kind of picture about that much strawberries, that'll give me an idea of roughly how many I wanna have in here. And I feel like this is going to really bring a fun, full texture um, and look to this baked oatmeal, having these complete slices of strawberries in here. So this batter sat while we were cutting up the strawberries and it's just giving it a little bit of time to absorb some of the moisture, the oatmeal anyways, to absorb some of the moisture. So we're just gonna dump this across everything and then I'm gonna use a spoon to get the oatmeal evenly spread across. We're just gonna push it around because since this is uncooked oatmeal, it needs to cook and absorb all of this milk mixture. Sometimes it works to double a nine by 13 recipe in a pan like this, and then other times it ends up being a little bit too much, but this looks pretty good. I think that we will escape the overflowing sides with this one. I'm just making more strawberry slices for the top so that we've got a great finished look after it's done baking. All right, we're going to carefully put this into the oven and we're gonna bake it for about a half hour and then I'm going to check it since it's not in the original nine by 13 form that the recipe called for. I'm gonna kind of check it as I go. While the oatmeal is baking, we are going to whip up a really simple freezer meal. I'm actually gonna double it. We're gonna do two of them. So our family is not over the moon about slow cooker meals, but one of them that we do really enjoy is some good beef stew. And I had quite a few beef roasts in the freezer that needed to be used up. So I grabbed two of them and we're gonna pull them over here. I just was taking them out of their packaging over by the sink. And we're gonna dice them up into bite-sized pieces that would work great in a beef stew. So this is a really easy prep, works out super simple because these things can freeze without blanching them, these veggies. So we've got some celery, we've got onion here that we're gonna be dicing up, and then I peel these carrots off camera, and I'm gonna be cutting them up and just dividing them between these two freezer bags.
All right, I had to turn on a few lights because we have some rain clouds coming in and I'm just getting all this cooling rack out, out this cooling rack and I'm going to pull the oatmeal out of the oven. Okay, so I ended up baking this for about 40 minutes and it just smells heavenly in the house. As you can see, it's just so beautiful. I love the way the top looks. We're gonna let this cool down so that we can cut it into squares for the freezer. All right, so here are my two roasts that I thawed out in the last couple of days. And I think they both have, they do, they both have a bone in them. So I did take a minute to sharpen my knife. Hopefully I can cut these pretty well into pieces. We'll see how this goes. Cutting around bone can be kind of tricky, but I'm just cutting around what I can see here from the angle that I'm holding this. And it seems to be working fairly well. And of course, these bones are not gonna go to waste and the cuttings from the vegetables because I can easily make up some quick beef bone broth. And as I'm flipping this over, I'm seeing that there's a good bit more cut I can get off of this. So I'm gonna make sure that I turn it all different ways just to be able to see what I can get off from every side. Now the trick here with cutting this meat up is you don't want it too fatty, but you also want some fat left in because otherwise it's not gonna be very tender and you're gonna end up with a lot of tough pieces. So you want to trim off any major fat chunks you see, but leave some behind. I am just doing one roast at a time here because then I can kind of see how much is going into each bag. All right, so to finish these bags off, I'm going to be adding an eight ounce jar of tomato sauce to each bag, but let me grab something to open these quick. Before I do that, I am going to add the salt and pepper into the, these sauces so that it mixes well in here and we don't have like a big clump of salt somewhere. I'm not doing exact measurements for this, so I'm just going to be kind of sprinkling in about what I think I would put in the entire crock pot meal. And these meals, by the way, will be made on low probably for eight hours at least, and then they'll be good to go. And I may also add a bit of butter. I just usually do butter when I do anything that's like a roast or stew. So I may add a bit of butter into each uh, stew as well. I had to think what we were making for a second. Yeah, each beef stew. And also, if you feel the need to add any liquid, you can add some water in as well depending on what cut of beef you're using and just how much veggie you put in. I just love the way uh, freezer meals like this look whenever all the veggies are layered like that. It's so pretty and just so colorful, makes you wanna grab it out of your freezer and eat it. I'm just going to close it up and obviously press as much air out. You all know I use a vacuum sealer at times, but with meals like these, they will only be in the freezer a few weeks, and I'm not gonna worry too much about vacuum packing them for sure. But as you saw, this is a lot of chopping and cutting, so it really saves you a lot of time in the long run when you're in a hurry or you just need a quick meal to pop into the crock pot and have ready for dinner. 
All right, so like I said, we're not gonna let any of the trimmings from these veggies and meat go to waste. So I have it all on a plate right here. <laughs> Might not look the most appetizing right now, but we're gonna make some great bone broth out of this. I'm not gonna show the finished product of this, but we're going to let this cook on low for probably 20 hours, something like that, 18 hours. So I just have the celery ends, the beef bones and cuttings. I actually might pull a little bit of this fat out of here because I don't want quite so much fat going in there. And I'm just going to put that all on the bottom. I also took an extra onion and cut it into fourths just to throw in here. You gotta have a lot of good onion when it comes to your broth. And once I have everything in here, I'm just going to take this and actually set it in my sunroom so it's not taking up space on my countertop. Um, that's one thing I like about crock pots. You can kind of stick them anywhere unless you have toddlers or little children that want to go up and touch them. I don't recommend that. <laughs> but you, for the most part, you can kind of hide them away on a porch somewhere or something like that. There's that big piece of fat that I don't want to put in there. You want a little bit, but nothing too crazy to where you're gonna have a bunch of fat in the end product. So there we go. So I'm just gonna add some salt and pepper to this and then I'll move it into the sunroom and fill it up with water. So when it comes to making broth, there's no exact ratio I went searching for one when I first began making broth and the best thing is just to kind of do some test runs, see how much of each type of vegetable you like in it. You might prefer parsley in yours, you might prefer garlic in yours. Just kind of find out how much and what type of veggies you want in the flavor. Once this is all cooked up, I'll just be canning it up just to use at a later date. So I'll be canning it in my pressure canner. All right, so grilling season is upon us and I'm going to put together some chicken for chicken skewers. If you guys can't tell in the last couple meal preps, we've really been into chicken skewers. It's just a yummy, quick, easy thing to eat so and make, but we're gonna make it even easier to make. So I have two different plates of chicken tenders here. I'm gonna be honest, it's almost enough for two meals, like each plate, but not quite. It's like a meal and a half for our family. So I decided to go ahead and make it up into one freezer bag, and then we'll have leftovers for lunches, you know, the following days after making this. So otherwise I would have divided it into four freezer bags, but I don't think it's quite enough for our family. So I'm going to make this really, really simple because they are tenders and they're nice and thin, you can easily cut them up with a pair of kitchen shears. So I'm just gonna go through and make chunks like the size you would put onto a skewer stick, and it's going to be really simple to just go fast, lickety split, and put these all in the bag, and then I'm gonna tell you the two different sauces that we're going to be making up. They're very, very simple to go in these bags for marinating. Okay, we have all of our chicken cut up here and I'm going to show you how I'm gonna throw these marinades together. So little time, so simple. So the first one we're gonna do is a garlic honey skewers um, and then the other one is the bang bang chicken skewers. I have actually shown this recipe recently but I'm just gonna show you how I'm doing a quickie version just to get it all put together and put into the freezer. 
Okay, so I'm not gonna do like exact measurements. I think I've said that maybe three or four times now in this video, <laughs> but I'll give you a ballpark. So I, my guess is there's probably two to three pounds of chicken in each bag here. Maybe a bit more, maybe like more like four pounds, somewhere around four pounds. So I'm going to be putting, if I had to guess, about a third cup of honey in here. You wanna have a pretty good amount um, just to get it nice and caramelized when you go to grill it. It's got kind of that caramelized exterior, which is so good. Now these are my garlic cubes that I have shown you all I don't know how many times. I feel like I'm a little tired of saying garlic cubes. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, but I make them every once in a while on my channel just to show you all how I make them. But they're frozen already and I'm not gonna thaw them out just because when I thaw this bag of chicken out, they will thaw with it and get more dispersed through the bag. So each, about two cubes is about one clove of garlic. So I am putting Oh, I'm gonna make it, we love garlic. So I'm probably putting about five to six cloves worth of garlic in here. And then I'm going to go ahead and drizzle it all down really well with some avocado oil. And as I mix this around, I may add more oil to it. Okay, moving on to the other one. This is all going to depend on how spicy you want these to be. With the sriracha and the sweet chili sauce, um, it's going to be have a good kick to it. So just keep that in mind. So I'm gonna start out with my base, which is mayo. So I'm just gonna squeeze. I'm probably putting, oh, I would say about a half cup or so of mayo in there. And then I'm gonna put about the same amount of this sweet chili sauce. Now there's all kinds of brands of ch sweet chili sauce out there, but because I personally eat low sugar, I'm using this one from G Hughes and it's really delicious if you want a nice sugar-free option. And then to add a bit more of a kick, we're gonna put some sriracha in here. And then I usually make up Bang Bang sauce to put on top of this after we grill it. So this is just the marinated version of this. I'm gonna close these guys up and just really smush them around. You could mix this up in a separate bowl, but I say why well, make an extra dirty bowl whenever you can just mix the marinade together inside the bag. All right, it's not perfect, but they're being mixed pretty well. And then when they're re I'll mix them around a bit more. Okay, I pulled things out of the refrigerator, the freezer, and I'm gonna put these meatballs in here and then we're gonna get everything labeled. So these are not like solidly, solidly frozen, but they are frozen enough that they're not gonna really mush together <laughs> into one big pile. So I'm gonna put about half of them into one freezer bag and then half into another freezer bag. Again, all of this is going to depend on how much you need and your serving sizes for your family. Let's see, there's 12, 13, there is, there we go. Just dividing what I have in half. I know about with it being three pounds, I know around what we usually eat. And usually when I make two pounds worth of meatballs, it's a little too much. So this should be perfect. And that is one perk I really like about prepping my own things at home is I can make serving sizes that are perfect for our family. And then we don't have as many constant leftovers. I'm just going to cut these into squares and this is actually has a very small serration on this knife and that helps a whole lot when cutting through something like this because it's able to cut through the strawberries too. Since
Since I have been doing oatmeal squares like this for years for uh, breakfast and stuff, I go through phases of it. It's not like we've solidly eaten these for years. However, I've learned to cut them into square sizes that I can put about nine servings in each bag, which works out perfectly because a lot of times my daughters are the ones eating these for breakfast with some milk across them or maybe even some yogurt or some maple syrup and that we have three daughters so quite literally this gives us three breakfasts after we pull a bag out of the freezer thank you all so much for joining me today it was really fun to spend time with you and i am just loving this new layout of filming if you haven't noticed obviously i am talking a lot through this video and i'd love to hear your feedback in the comments i really think this is a much more connected way for me to film, not saying all of my videos from here on out are gonna be like this, but I definitely plan to do a lot more of just us hanging out. I like that style. I used to do that a lot, and I switched to doing a lot more voiceover style videos, so I'm excited to go back to some of my roots. I know in some of my other content on Instagram and here on YouTube, some life updates, I mentioned that things are gonna be changing a little bit here on my channel, and this is one of the changes. You're gonna see a bigger variety of a lot more normal life and just a lot more taking you with me as I'm doing things, so I'm excited about that. But thanks a lot for watching. I appreciate every single one of you for watching my videos. And if you're new here, obviously hit that subscribe button. I'd love if you joined my channel. It's free and you can enjoy a lot of meal inspo, plus a little bit of life here and there too. And I also have a second channel. If y'all didn't know that, that will be linked in the description box. Leave me a comment. I'd love hearing from you all. Give this video a like and I'll see you guys in the next one.